and welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. Today, I'm speaking to Simon Lehman, who is the CEO and co-founder of AGL Atelier, which is a consulting firm for uh, the short-term rental industry, either for property managers or for tech in that industry. And thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Mayra. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's we actually met um, in January in Cartagena, which feels now like a lifetime ago. <laughs> so much has happened since then. Um, but so why don't you tell me a little bit? I know that AJL has come out with a new website, kind of a, a rebrand. What's going on there? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, Cartagena was was incredible and I was very fortunate to be part of the SCR Legends with Eric and Jasper and you obviously. Um, and a lot of things have happened. So the world came to a stop. Uh, the, the, the hospitality industry has been reshuffled and, and last but definitely not least, we also lost a very dear friend. Uh, in the meantime, that we were able to spend some time together in Cartagena, which is Anton. So, you know, it's, it's just created, you know, um, how do you call it, reality. Uh, a lot very quickly. Um, so we had obviously do our own thing at AJ Atelier as well to say, okay, how do we position ourselves? What do we do? So during lockdown, we obviously started to create a lot of content for the industry. So we wanted to stay on top of mind and, and organize a couple of conferences. And at the same time, we, we really got a lot of inbound interest for people who obviously wanted to work with us to get ideas and strategies to, to obviously come through this crisis. Um, so we were actually extremely busy, and at the same time, our, pro our product portfolio started to expand. And we sort of felt, hey, we're not AGL consulting. This doesn't sound right, right? I mean, consulting is one of our pieces, and and you know, consulting has a sort of a bad connotation to it. And um, we felt, no, we're more than that. We're actually the go-to partner in vacation rental, short-term rental industry. That's what we are, and we're like, you know, we're like artists, and, a, and an artist works in an atelier. And he has different things and products and, and, and projects that he's working on. And so we have different products and, and projects as well. So we do obviously speaking and, and creating content for the, for, the, for the industry. We do consulting, as you mentioned, for property managers, but also tech startups uh, has been very excited. We're working with some great companies like Checking Scan and Reviews and others. Uh, we've been able to be part of their journey and, and building their strategy and their MVPs. And then we uh, have started to do a lot more in M&A, as you can appreciate that merger acquisitions are now hot on the table again, because we will see some further consolidation. And with our partnership with, it, with Gambon, uh, which is a very large investment bank in Paris, we're super well positioned to sort of serve the M&A piece of the market. You know, there's companies now disappearing. VREasy was probably the first one um, that, um, you know, closed shop in Barcelona. We're looking for opportunities to to go with fantastic stay. And uh, so there's a lot of interest in, in the market on tech right now. And then the last, uh, but I can't talk a lot about this, is obviously our educational piece uh, that we're working heavily on because we wanna build a very comprehensive uh, tutorial for vacation rental industry in conjunction with the startup. And there's more uh, going to be announced. So we're working very hard on, on tutorials. And then uh, definitely not uh, uh, least but last is solution, which is an algorithm for pricing that we're developing as well. Okay, so you guys are really attacking every single angle of the short-term rental industry. Yeah, you could say that, you know, and, and people say to us, you know, we're, we're like have our hands in every pie. Yes, we do, because we feel, I mean, this is our slogan, we're the go-to partner in the vacation rental industry. And if somebody needs something, either an exit, raise capital, or get strategic advice, we can pretty much help on all these levels. And, you know, one thing that has been very interesting for us as well during these very challenging times, we have now access to incredible um, people and incredible know-how of people who wanna work for us as well. Obviously, OTAs are letting off people. We have obviously seen a lot of people um, now looking for jobs who are extreme uh, big experts in our industry. And, and they're looking uh, actually to join AGL because they see that what we have built is beyond Simon, it's, it's, it's a team, it's a, it's a brand, it's a company behind it. You know, sometimes people say to us, what, you're only three people doing all this? And say, yeah, actually, uh, now we're five and we're growing to seven very soon. 
So we're growing, we're, um, we're opening an office in Barcelona, we just completed the company registration, it's called AJ Atelier Spain SL, so we're very excited to have now a legal entity in Spain, which makes it a lot easier to, to hire more people. Yeah, excellent. So next time you're here in Barcelona, then we can do this live or just have a coffee. <laughs> well, absolutely. So I'm pretty interested in hearing uh, about the work that you do with these tech startups for reviews, for example. I saw on LinkedIn that you um, mentioned, and you also just said now that you've been working with them. What kind of things do you do, you do together with these tech startups? Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. So we've had quite a few uh, in the past who wanted to work with us and just sort of try to understand the market. You know, I think we are, a great, you know, we, we're working with super large PMSs which don't need us anymore. Um, but when they came into the market, they needed us because they wanted to understand what is short-term rental vacation rental all about. So it's not about us, you know, providing technology consulting and and talking about the codes and and, and the software and everything like that. That's that's their piece. They want to they want to resolve something or they want to create a piece of technology which they believe is needed. For the industry, so first of all, we do the validation of the strategy, right? So it's like, hey, there is a chance for you, or actually, there is no chance for you. And we've had that case, and uh, we had even one of the great cases we had with, an, with a tech startup coming to us is that we we ended up integrating them as our own technology okay. with pricing BNB and Ezio Albanese, who is now working for us and and developing uh, AGL pricing solution. So it's been it's been amazing that we've even had an insourcing of a startup who actually wanted to consult with us, and then we said, "Hey, come and join us." So we even had that too. But with reviews, it, it's really validation of product and then getting them to understand, you know, how the market structured, who are the different players, and and then really go deep into their value proposition. What do they want to achieve? And, and I guess challenging the strategy is that what we do in depth and getting to understand. The, you know, the massive fragmentation of the vacation rental industry in terms of the value proposition and, and to think about and get them to think about what is their future role? Where do they want to expand to? You know, we have, we have verticalized the vacation rental tech landscape like crazy. And, and one of the always good references to illustrate that is the Who is Who from Rentals United, which I really like that publication because it just shows you how crazy fragmented this market is. And you know, from consultants to PMSs to channel managers to house automation to you name it. And and it's hard. And every new startup is, is, is fragmenting that value chain even more. And I think it's important for them to think, hey, what is my next step? Because we, we, we really believe very strongly that the survival of these individual pieces of the value chain is going to be super difficult. And this is what we want to people make, make think about. You know, I mean, a, a revenue manager is maybe not going to survive. Maybe they want to expand into other products as well. And, and that, having said that on all the tech startups, is they need to think about, you know, what is my business model? How do I make money with it? How do I scale it? How do I become irreplaceable? How do I create stickiness? So that's normally about a three-day, very intensive workshop where we go through a clear structure of, who are we, who we, do, who we want to be, what is the elevated pitch, what's the vision, the mission, then challenging the strategy. And, and they find that super refreshing because basically it allows them to sort of step out of their daily wheel and then actually look at their company from an outside standpoint and say, okay, how does the industry see your business or how does the investor see their business? So we help them to put the message to potential investors together. So it's a super exciting process. And, and obviously our goal as AGL is not to come in and go out after three days. It's actually to take these guys by the hand and continue to work together as they go through the evolution of their product. It's interesting what you pointed out that um, it's so fragmented, but there are still like some, some brands are, they are PMSs, they are channel managers, they are pricing tools, they do a little bit of everything. And some of them are even like, oh, we're all of these things for small hosts and for big hosts, you name it, we can do it. Um, what do you think? I mean, it, you did seem to suggest that you should add on products and features and not just focus on one, I guess, but what is the right approach to, to do that? Shouldn't you specialize to some degree? 
That's a great question, Maeva. And you know, at the end of the day, what is more driven by the market and like by the market environment and what you should really do strategically and maybe two different things right now, right? So, so at the moment, what our thesis is that there's so much venture capital in the, in the space that you need to, you need to produce enough um, obviously income to, to be, be a profitable business. And I think the verticalization has made it so hard and, and for, for an operator, you know, a property manager to, to navigate with seven, eight systems, it's just, that's just not a good experience. That's number one. And number two, which I think is even more important is to, as an as a easy calculation example, you know, let's assume that our sort of average gross margin in leisure is about 30% on rental, right? 15% of that is going to your OTA. Then you, you remain with another 15% to make your business run. And then you have 10 technologies you need to use who, who are taking in conjunction another seven, 8% of your revenue. So that leaves you le left with about 7% of your gross margin to run your business. So that's not sustainable for the property manager, but the same, it's not sustainable for the tech company. Yes, I totally agree with you that this is what we're always advising our companies as well, you know, stay focused and do well what you do well and what is your core. And, and, but it's extremely tempting to do more because you need to create a higher return on invested capital. And therefore you need to increase your take rate on the technology that you sell in order to be, in, in order to survive. So, so the result of that is going to be, we're seeing massive consolidation. I think there will be a lot of businesses going out of business if they cannot expand their value and their take rate uh, because it's just too hard to survive. And the bigger ones who are well-funded to your point, they're saying, hey, we want to do it all, right? We want to be, we're a PNS and we want to expand into revenue management. We want to expand into channel management. We want to expand into house automation, property operation software. And, and things like that. So either they acquire other businesses to, to insource that technology or they build it themselves. So we've, we've seen some very uh, big shifts. And I think for the next six to 12 months, we're seeing a lot more, especially on the M&A side and then also closures. I'm, I'm actually quite certain about it. One interesting piece I would like to mention focusing on technology here though, is it, it can go the other way too. So there's no one size fits all in this conversation. And, and, and I think the channel management piece is, is actually quite remarkable. Um, <clears throat> when, so channel managers were pretty well established very quickly because it was very difficult for you as a PM or as a PMS to integrate with all these 80, 80 hundred channels. But today we're talking about five channels taking 80%. So everybody thinks, hey, I can build my own channel manager. And let us not forget in Europe, 50% of property managers are using their proprietary PMS. So we're talking of thousands of PMSs out there and they all think, hey, I can make a channel integration with Airbnb. That's pretty simple with the API. And then what they realize, it's actually not their core. Secondly, it, it, integrating is one, but maintaining the channel is another. So we have seen a wave of PMSs and proprietary PMSs to build out their own channels. And now it's going back and they're saying, hey, give that to the channel managers. This is what they do on a daily basis. They're better in, in maintaining these channels and keep these integrations alive than us. We're better in, in developing PMS technology and not channel management. So it can, go through, it can go through waves. Okay, so if I'm a new project, uh, sorry, if I'm a new PMS on the scene, better not try to build a channel manager, but instead build partnerships. Absolutely, you know, I mean, this is what everybody has done as well. We, we, you will see partnerships being more um, more realistic going forward. How much do you have left that you can share with marketplaces or with partnerships as well? But I think the channel manager, so first of all, I wouldn't advise you to become a new PMS. I mean, let's just leave it at that for the time being, right? So I obviously understand your question very well, but if I could advise you as AJ Latelier, I would not go and, and uh, found a new PMS, uh, to be perfectly honest to you, because that is, a, is more than a shark cage yeah. uh, and there's plenty of competition out there. But yes, to your point, this is what you have to do. So you need to think about what is part of my core that I understand with my team and my DNA that I have, that we are good at, and what is better we're sourcing from someone else. And you know, that, that that question can be can be 
can be can be thought about as a as a tech provider, but this can also be thought about as a PM, as a property manager. You might want to in-source cleaning, maybe you want to outsource cleaning because this is better that some somebody else is doing it. I think that applies to everything that we need to think about. So you say that there is definitely a saturation of PMSs. Is there any kind of need that property managers have right now that tech isn't is there's not very much providing this this need or any trends of new technology coming? Well, I don't think so. I mean, I said, you know, the PMS technology is, is becoming commodity in the industry. And, and what still overwhelms me at a great deal is that there are still property managers out there who don't find the fitting PMS for them. That makes me laugh, right? Because, you know, at the end of the day, we're so particular uh, in terms of how we want to apply technology to handle our, our daily operation. But ultimately, you know, we are, we are not in, we're not in rocket science, right? We're connecting guests with owners. That's all we do. That's pretty simple business case. So I, I think there is definitely technology that fits that requirement pretty well. I mean, of course, there's particularities in terms of where you're at, in terms of taxes, you know, um, uh, uh, financial reporting, some really specific specific things, different EITs, different languages, different cultures, yes. But at the end of the day, we're connecting guests with owners. That's all we do. And it can't be too hard for you as a property manager to source that technology. So I think, yes, everybody wants to become more seamless, more sophisticated. I think the biggest area of focus for PMSs has to be, you know, how seamless um, the integration can actually happen for a new customer. I think that's where the ultimate value is, but to differentiate yourself, if the PMS looks yellow, blue, or green, I don't think it's, it's gonna be super hard. And interesting enough, I had a very, very great conversation uh, with uh, uh, Jeremy Gall yesterday, who's the founder of, uh, of Breezeway and the CEO of Breezeway because I have my own blog called Red Shoes Talks. So we had our uh, conversation yesterday and we talked about tech and it's interesting what he said. You know, he, he said to me, Simon, think about seven, 10 years ago. I mean, the PMS piece of technology was the most sticky piece for a property manager and he will never change a, PM, a PMS in, in seven years. And, and what do we see today? They're changing like once a year, they can change a PMS, right? So things have changed. So now we need to think about as a technology company. So as consolidation moves in, we'll have less competition. So that's already good, I guess. And then the second piece is, okay, how can we get the customer quickly to come on board? And then how can we create value uh, while he's with us for him to stay with us uh, going forward? You know, how do we create more value for a PM to say, hey, this is the best place for me to be at. and and I want to continue to do so. And one of the ways we could do that is like have have really good user forums where you you know take in the opinions of PMs to get your product better and smarter and and and, and keep growing it and make them feel part of the evolution evolution of the product. I think that will create quite a substantial amount of stickiness as well. What do you think changed between earlier before when you said that um, PMs wouldn't change? For seven years and now they're changing every year is it their needs that have changed is it the products that just aren't working for them or, or what changed during that time you know i think one thing that is probably driving this the most is price and exactly to your point before yeah you know, to the point that we made before i mean consider the fact that you know 50 percent of our gross margin is going to the ota and the rest of the 50 i need to finance my operation my tech and everything else. So the margin compression for a property manager is daily business. And look, we have seen how volatile this industry is at COVID. When demand stops, you only with one OTA to, to, for your demand and that stops, you, you have no way to survive, right? So now people are becoming very sensitive also in terms of cost. So I think the change has mostly been triggered by aggressive pricing by the PMSs to win more customers over. And, and a PM is, is sort of, it's not just the tech and the requirements that they have, I think. And of course, things are get, getting better and better and certain PM, PMSs might have not 
invested as much in new features and everything else. So, and the PM gets more sophisticated. So he says, hey, I wanna have this. I wanna have a house operating module as well. I wanna have an accounting module and I'm looking for more sophisticated platforms, yes, for sure. But I think it was also very much driven by, by price and margin compression. So PMs were forced to reduce their operating costs. Absolutely. Um, so in this, in this whole time that you've been in this industry and especially lately this year, while you're seeing all this technology and you're saying blue, green, doesn't matter, you're not differentiating. Is, has there been any, any company, any tech where you're like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I think that they're gonna do well. And if so, what was it that they were doing well? So first of all, I'm obviously not making any online marketing in any shape or form. Uh, for anybody out there, obviously we're working with quite a number of tech providers together. I think, you know, it, it's a great question. And, and I think I could not point that out to like one or two or three companies. I think it really differs by, you know, what works incredibly well and what does not work so well. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think there is one that does everything perfectly well. I think it's really depending on the type of technology that they're focusing on that they really want to be good at, you know, in, in, in having a seamless integration or having, you know, a seamless transaction, having all the channel managers or all the channels integrated properly and they, they just run through without any issue. I think it's not one particular one who does everything particularly well. And, you know, everybody tries to be innovative, but I think when you, when you try to be innovative in a product that potentially has come to be a total commodity, I think it's becoming extremely difficult to be innovative and bring something new, you know, if there's, and I, you know, at the end of the day, this is interesting again, who are you listening to? And, and I believe to, to be perfectly honest to you, I see a lot of tech companies who want to produce or build something based on their own experience. And then they think they can do it better. And for me, this is very dangerous. And coming back to one of your earlier questions when AGL comes in as a consultant to startups is that so many times we're seeing startups with incredible stories, right? And they say, because we had this bad experience uh, renting once an Airbnb, we felt we need to solve it. This is dangerous like hell because you need another 5,000 who will tell you the same story because if it was just you, then you're gonna be alone with your product out there. And, and I think this is something that I said before that you need to sort of have user classes or user groups to really make sure that the technology you're developing is actually serving the customer's needs and is not something that you feel is, is super important. And, and third, I think what also PMs and, and technology innovators need to, need to think about is, you know, which piece of technology should be with whom as a supplier. So for example, I'm making a perfect, I'm making an example for PMSs. You know, PMS is now moving into more and more revenue management. Is revenue management really the place, is, is the PMS really the place you wanna draw your, your pricing from? your revenue management from as a PM? I don't think so. You know, I would like to have a totally independent revenue manager supplier for my property management company. I don't trust the PMS to give me the right pricing because historical data might not be there. Um, you know, there's not enough uh, data to validate uh, my pricing as well. So I think you can also go beyond. So what I'm trying to say is that people can also go beyond um, building technology, which is actually doesn't make sense to be sourced by one supplier and actually can be sourced by others. Um, I find it interesting what you were mentioning about creating <clears throat> the user groups. And earlier you had said even building your own user forums, for example, um, what, what does that look like? Because there are already so many forums. There's like the Airbnb forum itself. There's forums on Reddit. Uh, there are Facebook groups. Is that, is that the sort of forums that you're speaking of? No, I mean, this is, <clears throat> this needs to be a tech provider who builds a strong user group or a forum that of, of customers and also potential customers to tell you what they need on a daily basis. You know, I think 
it's still today the best way of experiencing property management is actually go and work for one uh, a week or two and actually do the entire value uh, proposition from cleaning toilets to checking in, checking out, handling complaints, handling refunds, et cetera, et cetera, do, do, do rebookings, just go through the entire thing. And I don't know how many PMS providers have actually had, did that themselves. I was once a CEO of, a, of an electric bike company and we defined high-end electric bikes in Switzerland. And we had, we had and, and one of our bikes was really focused on seniors. So people are 60 plus ages because of a low entry a point for the bike. So we had user group of 50 retired people who used it on a daily basis to come to our factory and sit in our boardroom and, and have a discussion about our next design and what we need to be conscious about in, 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 in designing for the product. Because you know all my engineers were between 20 and 30 years old. So they didn't think like a 60 or 70 year old who used an electric bike. And, and that was so powerful for us, for them to come in who use their bikes every day to go shopping, to go and see friends and whatever. And, and by these use cases, we were really able to, to engineer the best bike for seniors, which we could have never had if we wouldn't have listened to them. And you know, this is something you learn in the first marketing uh, class in your in university is like, we need to be customer centric. But if you ask me, and there are not a lot of tech providers out there who are really tech uh, uh, customer centric. They're tech centric. They believe that they're solving the world, but they haven't even asked the customer if what they're doing is the right thing to do. And you know, this might sound very trivial and easy, but it's actually the truth. No, I agree with you. And that's also when I start a new <laughs> strategy with my with some clients, I say, okay, well, what do you know about your customers? Have you talked to them? And most of the time saying, well, I think that they use it this way. I think this, <laughs> well, it's nice that you think that, but can we talk to them and ask them directly? Because uh, <laughs> that's not gonna work. But the problem is how do you incentivize them? To, Cause a lot of the times, especially these bigger PMs, they don't have any time to do anything. Why would they wanna spend the time? How do you incentivize them to talk to you and on a regular basis? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Obviously with the electric bike company it was a lot easier because these were seniors who were all retired. So they, they, they got a free lunch and they all came to our factory. So they always loved to have a free lunch with us and, uh, and share their wisdom with us. So that, that, that was a pretty easy case on that one. And I don't think it will motivate a property manager with a free lunch, maybe more a party or something, but we're not in party mode right now mm -hmm. either. So it's going to be very difficult. It's a fair question, Mayla. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, you can definitely, you can always create, um, you know, incentives, uh, even even on, on the pricing side, because it needs to be worth something to you as well that you can, and, and you provide some discounts, which is definitely a driver, or you can, you can do core marketing activities together and say, hey, you know, we'll give you a platform. I mean, we see some of the PMSs uh, who do that exceptionally well, they, they make some case cases out of their customer and, and actually communicate those. I think that can be a very nice incentive for a PM as well to say, hey, you know, I'm bosses around the world to be a role model in how I operate my business and, and we provide high value PMS. I think there's different ways you can handle. That's actually also what Rentals United does, isn't it? They do interview uh, their own customers who are property managers and then they make these, oh, these are the top property managers and explaining. And that I've that's a, a great marketing practice. Not, I mean, it, it's for learning about your users, but then it's also showcasing them. And one of the things that PMs love learning about is how other PMs are operating their businesses. What they can Absolutely. Yeah, excellent. All right, well, Simon, this has been enlightening. Uh, I thank you so much for your time. If people wanna get in touch with you, where's the best place to do that? That's a good question. I don't even have my email on here uh, as well. So obviously everybody can find me on LinkedIn, AJL Atelier. Uh, LinkedIn is a pretty easy way, but my email address is simon.lehman, E-H and double N at ajlatelier.com. Excellent. Well, enjoy the rest of your working holiday in the Swiss mountains. And it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you, Maeva. It's been a great pleasure for me as well. Thank you so much. Ciao. Bye-bye.